the guy who was one of the best baseball players of all time. He played in the Negro Leagues. He was part of the San Francisco Giants, the 54 World Series champs. He led the National Guard RBIs in 1951. Monty Irvin, how you doing, Monty? Fine. Who am I speaking to? David Spada. Hey, David. Okay. Good to talk to you. And I'm Elliot Harris, and welcome to Sports and Torts. Monty, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Monty. Yes. When you played with the Giants, I mean, you had some great players on those teams, but Willie Mays, what was it like playing with him? Oh, it was very thrilling. It was a pleasure to come to the ballpark every day. We didn't know what great feat he would perform uh, uh, each day. So uh, coming to the ballpark was a pleasure. Now, you played a long time in, in the Negro Leagues, uh, mm-hmm. starting in uh, 1938 with the Newark Eagles. Yes. What? Well, Coming to the to the major leagues, did you have any idea what the competition would be like, whether it would be better or worse, about the same? Well, we knew it was going to be a little better because, you know, they played a balanced schedule and they played more games than we did. And uh, so we we knew that, uh, you know, you, you would have to play a little harder, do things a little better. We all uh, recognized that. I saw that Branch Rookie was there after you wanted you to sign with the Dodgers. Was there any reason you didn't sign with the Dodgers rather than the Giants? Oh, well, uh, when, when I first came out of service in 1945, I was approached along with Roy Campanella, of course, Jackie Robinson. And I told him that uh, I had had a hard time in the Army. I, uh, I like to uh, uh, <clears throat> try to recapture that old feeling that I had. I was uh, in the Army for three years and hadn't played any at all. I was in the uh, ETO, European Theater of Operation. And I, and, uh, but, so I signed with them and told them I let them know when I was ready. In 49, they said, uh, you know, are you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. But uh, she couldn't get uh, the lady who owned our team, Effa Manley, uh, Said uh, you took Don Newcomb, you didn't give me any money for him. I'm not gonna let you take Monty without giving some money. So Branch Rookie said, "Well, your co- contracts are not valid." And rather than get into a hassle, he released Ben Harstone and signed me right away. Okay. What was it like working for a woman owner like Ethel Manley? Well, you know they they were, you know they did the best that they could. They want real baseball people, you know, that knew baseball with a lot of money and all that. But they, you know, they, they we had a, you know, we had a, some good players. We had, you know, uh, Larry Doby, uh, uh, Don Newcomb, Leon Day, Willie Wells, Ray Dandridge, you know, these kind of fellas. So it, it was, it, we, we, you know, we had a good team and we won the, won the pennant in the World Series in 1946. So uh, it was okay, but uh, we knew where the real money was, and that was in the majors. I was happy to sign with the with the with, with the with the New York Giants. Did you play against Satchel Page? Oh yeah, played with him and against him. What was he like? Was he that great of a pitcher? Because yeah, I don't see much very, about him. Very fast, very colorful, had a lot of charisma, and he always did what he said he was going to do. If he said, uh, "I'm going to be very stingy tonight." I'm giving up nothing that so you could expect no runs. <laughs> was he a po- was he a po- guy he was was he a power pitcher or finesse pitcher? No, 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 fastball pitcher with great control. And then later on in his career, he developed a great uh, curveball, which he talked about Feller. It's a great guy. There would never be another one like him. Yeah. Now, in the Negro Leagues, who was the best player that you saw? Best player I saw was Josh Gibson, hitter, catcher. Legendary. Yeah, legendary. Uh, run like a deer, had a rifle for an arm, and could hit the ball as far as anybody that ever lived. It's too bad that the Major League fans never got a chance to see him play. How did, how did Josh Gibson compare to a guy like Roy Campanella? Well, they used to play on the same team. Uh, when they both showed up, Roy would play third base, third base or right field. Josh was the catcher because he was such a great, he was such a great hitter. And uh, had, you know, like Satchel, a lot of charisma, would, uh, you know, hit hit the ball as far as anybody. We've had- and in every league he ever played in, he, 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 he had the most home runs and then the highest batting average, everywhere he ever played. 
We've interviewed numerous former players, and almost all of them say Willie Mays was the greatest player all around of all time. Well, he, of course, Willie was. That was later. I'm talking about when right. I started. Willie right. didn't come up until '51. Josh started in 1930. What kind of stats would Josh have put up in the major leagues? It would have been, uh, it would have been wonderful to see him. If you once saw him, you'd never forget him. He had, again, he was charismatic. The things he did, the way he did them. And uh, so you you would never, you, you know, when you saw Mays or DiMaggio or Williams play, uh, once you saw him, you never f- f- forgot them. Uh, if you saw Josh catch and play, you would have never forgotten him. Okay. In it's the a shame ne- that uh, the Major League fans uh, didn't know that much about him. Definitely. Now, in the Negro Leagues, who was the best pitcher you went up against? In the Negro, it was, uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, Satchel, of course. But then there was uh, Raymond Brown, Ray Brown, uh, Mm -hmm. Bill Bird, Roy Partlow, Johnny Taylor. These fellas could pitch. They were great. Slim Jones, he was a Randy Johnson left-hander for the Philadelphia uh, Stars. Left-handed, pitched just like Randy Johnson. When whenever he pitched, all the left-handers didn't feel good that day and <laughs> asked to be set, <laughs> to sit out. Now, was Cool Papa Bell as as fast as everybody claims he was? Yeah, uh, I didn't see him in his primes. I saw him when you know when he was just about ready to to end his career. But I asked some of my good friends. I said, "Who was the best? Who was the fastest? Sam Jethro." Or oh, Cool Papa Bell. They said, Monty, nobody can run as fast as Cool. <laughs> so I took their word for it. How hard was it when you went to the major leagues and the Negro leagues adjusting? Well, it wasn't that, it wasn't that difficult. In fact, it was easier because the playing conditions were better. You know, the pay was more. Uh, the traveling was, was much better. You know, the food and everything else. So... Uh, it was easier to play. All you had to do is uh, play consistently good, and you could stay there. So that's what uh, I tried to do. I came up when I was, you know, almost 31, and uh, I was just very grateful that I got the chance to play a little, and I wish I had uh, had come up in 1936 instead of 1949. Well, your numbers would have been off the charts if you'd yep. done that. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think what those numbers might have ended up looking like? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, uh, you know, I was MVP in Puerto Rico, Cuba, uh, uh, Mexico. On my honeymoon in 1942, in Mexico, I hit 397, and uh, on my honeymoon, and that's when I realized uh, that uh, if given a chance, uh, you know, I was a ma- I could have been a major league prospect. What was your favorite ballpark to play in? I, I love to play in Wrigley Field. I like the day ball. I like the fans being close to the to the uh, you know to the players to the field, and uh, I love playing every day, playing baseball in the daytime. That was my favorite ballpark. Who was your favorite manager? Leo DeRosa. I only played uh, for two: Leo DeRosa and then Stan Hack. Stan Hack managed my last year and. And uh, at, at Wrigley, he, and uh, you know, we finished last. Was the best team I ever played on to finish last. You know, we had Ernie Banks and and uh, D. Fundy and Gene Baker, Big Bob Rush, two or three other guys. Terrific. Was Ralph right Ki- was Ralph Kiner with the Cubs that year or no? No, no, no. Kiner had no Kiner had uh, gone someplace else. Yeah, you had Ernie just as he was sort of ascending to. Uh... To MVP status and all yeah, that. Yeah, uh-huh. he was on his way up. He he was about as smooth a shortstop when he was out there as there was. Yeah, he was very good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, had a good arm, great on ground balls, could come in, go back, terrific, and showed up every day ready to play. He was terrific, uh, shortstop. When you were in the outfield with Thompson and Mays, and you had the first black outfield, was there a lot made of that back then? No, no, we we didn't even realize what was happening, and uh, you know, DeRocher, uh, uh you know, put the, the the best three outfielders out there, and we were, you know, just happened to be black. So, 
Oh, but we didn't, you know, we didn't think of uh, think about it that much at the time, and we're not until somebody mentioned it that we realized that it was a, you know, historic. Well, we we're just happy to be out there and happy to be playing. Okay. How difficult was it having Leo DeRocher? A lot you hear a lot of stories about him. Good manager, great manager. Uh huh. Wanted to win and do anything to win. He was a, he had great strategy, and he. Uh, <clears throat> He uh, he was two or three innings ahead of the uh, uh, whoever he was uh, managing against, he, and then uh, anybody that played for him will tell you that uh, he was outstanding, just just great. I I see that when you retired from baseball, you worked for Bowie Kuhn. Yes, in the commissioner's office. Sixteen years. So. When you did that, he sent you when Hank Aaron broke the record uh, that Babe Ruth had for years. Why did Bowie Kuhn not go to that game? Well, he, had, he he asked me if I would go. He said I have a conflict. He said I had a I have a speaking engagement uh, in Cleveland at the Wigwam Club, and I don't want to uh, disappoint them. He says uh, he said here here's a gold studded diamond watch. He said uh, please go down and present it to Hank if he breaks the record. I think down though if uh, if the commissioner had to do it all over again, I think he would have would have uh, attended. At least, you know, for the first series, and uh, he didn't think uh, that uh, Hank was going to break the record the first night they played in Atlanta. Uh, it was a historic night, and uh, I was happy to to uh, you know give Hank the watch when he hit you know when he hit uh, four uh, seven uh, fifteen, and Hank kept asking me, uh, "Molly, where's the commission?" I said, "The commission couldn't." Come, Hank, you asked me to give you this watch and said, yeah, if you want to know why he didn't come, you have to call him up and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had your uh, number officially retired by the San Francisco Giants on uh, last Ju- year. June 26, 2010. What was that like for you? Oh, terrific. Uh, you know, Mays and McCovey, Marichal, Gaylord Perry, and uh, Orlando Cepeda was there. My only regret is that I could not, I did not, uh, play with these fellows, you know, with, uh, with, with all of them except Mays, because uh, I would have loved to play with this great, you know, group of Hall of Famers. But they were uh, on the field with me, uh, cheered me on, and made me feel real happy. I see that you're on the Veterans Committee. Here in Chicago, Ron Sano has been trying to get in the Hall of Fame until he died. Mm-hmm. Do you think he's ever going to get in? I think, I think he will, yeah. In time, I think John will make it. He's a great player. Uh, then after he had his, you know, uh, health problems, he became an, uh, a good announcer. So I think the the the, the jury is still out on him. I think sooner or later he'll make it. I mean, do the veterans committee members talk amongst each other and say, you know what, we should put him in. We should put him oh, in. Oh yeah, make- they talk. Yeah, they always do. What yeah. was the reason that he didn't get in? Is it some? Players thought he was a showboat. Yeah, you know, I, uh, you know. Look, it, it took. Look how long it took Blylevin to get in. He finally made it. So if there's hope for Blylevin, uh, there's, there's certainly hope for Ron Santo. Yeah. Great guy, good announcer, and has some great stats. Yeah. Look how long it took Monty Irvin to get in. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's then the, that's the way it is. Another player played in the Negro Leagues, Minnie Minoso. They've been campaigning for that's, the White Sox. That's true. Many, uh, I think, missed by one vote, and uh, maybe one of these t- days that many uh, will get in. I played with him uh, against many since from 1946 on. Played against him in Cuba, and then, uh, you know, and uh, he was a great player then. Good fellow, good guy to have on the team, and I hope many will make it one of these days. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Irvin. It was a pleasure talking to you. Happy to talk to you, and good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you.